Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. Now, as promised, I said that I was going to give a little bit more commentary on the uh, case surrounding Amber Geiger and what she did to Botham Shim Jean. Um, so I'm going to do that right now, and I'm not going to just really focus on the case itself. Uh, we already know the details of the case, but what I am going to focus on is the mindset that is deeply established and deeply rooted in our people. And that mindset is very difficult to break away from. It was put there by the religion of Christianity. Um, there is this belief among our people that is just so far gone that it would take a miracle to get us from this place that we're in. Now, the nation is divided on this right now. I listened to a couple of commentators, um, white men who talked about the case, and uh, their perspective was right. It was right on. Um, basically, one guy was saying that um, when you ask um, certain groups of people, when you ask white people, uh, was this fair? Many of them think that she shouldn't do any time because uh, they were giving all of the excuses about if she was afraid, she was confused, she was tired. And they believe that those are all good defenses for taking someone's life because you were confused or tired. And he even stated that one one of them even stated that if it was him standing there um, as a white male, she would have never pulled the trigger. So there's a lot of uh, conversation about this particular uh, case right now um, coming from every direction. And it's unfortunate that we look within the black community, the divide is so strong, it's, it's, it's horrible. Now, most of us are saying, okay, what is going on with this case? What is going on to, to the point where our people feel the need to forgive and, and just throw things away? I mean, you have a young man who's dead, and the family is just falling over themselves to comfort the one who took his life. And even stating that he himself, if he could come back from the grave, would forgive her. What? Mm, mm, mm. What's going on with our people? What is going on with our people? You have people of other races saying that they, they couldn't do it and they wouldn't do it. But let me tell you what is happening. The Bible says that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Now, we were raised to believe, especially those who grew up in Christianity, that you forgive all no matter what. Now, what's so hypocritical about black people is this. When they promote and push that narrative about forgiving and loving is usually for people outside of us. Now, there are rare occasions where someone will do something within our racial group and you'll get that type of narrative but for the most part they want you to throw the book right but when it comes to people of other nations there's all this love and forgiveness and crying and tears and hugging and coddling and oh I forgive you and I don't want you to suffer one day I don't want you to go to jail I just want you to live a good life and go to heaven and all of that stuff but for our own people we don't have that I have seen so-called black people so cold to one another. I mean, I experience it all, all of the time. If you go out in public and you run into a black person, there used to be a day and time, and I guess it depends on what area you're in, too. Some areas, the people are just friendly, period, regardless to what race they are. But there are some areas where you'll get more white people smiling and saying hello and speaking to you and holding doors than you will black people. It is what it is, family, okay? My experience has been sometimes you can't even speak to our people. They'll look at you like you, like you have horns growing out of your head because we are just not cordial to one another. We don't speak to one another sometimes. We won't hold doors for one another. We won't even acknowledge one another. I shared many experiences before. One in particular, I remember um, we, were, we were at a Lowe's um, at a location where we used to live, and uh, there was a, a black female that worked there. We've seen her there for years, and every time you try to, you, when you get close to her, you try to make keep eye contact so you can say hello. She turns her head 
as if, uh, don't even speak to me. She just turns her head. You know how a person, when they see you approaching, they turn their head pretending like they're looking at something else as if they think you're stupid enough to not notice. They just don't want to speak. Well, what happened one day is um, I was approaching and an older white guy was approaching at the same time, but he was like on the side of me. And so she literally, figure of speech, broke her neck to say, oh, hi, how are you? To him. And I said to myself, ain't this something? I can't even get you to, to, to even look in my direction. Much less speak. But to this white man, you you can't you can't wait to just say hello and and catch the bobblehead syndrome. So we are messed up as a people. We are destroyed as a people to the point where you can't even tell tell us about us. There are large groups of our people that actually agree with uh, Botham Shim John's family. And the judge and the officer, they they feel like, oh, we should really take her in like she's this damsel in distress that needs the love and support of the black community after killing this black man. Oh, she needs us now. She needs to know that we're not all hateful, that we're not. Is Come on now. It has nothing to do with hate. There's a time and a season for everything under the sun. The scripture says there's a time to love and a time for hate. But many of you Christians, you don't even want to read the passages of Scripture that talks about the things that make you feel uncomfortable. You feel uncomfortable with the whole idea of ever having to dislike, much less hate someone. A Scripture tells you that a certain deed is righteous. Some of you couldn't even deal with what happened in the book of Numbers when uh, one of the Israelite men got into a relationship or a marriage with a, uh, I believe it was a Moabite woman. And because they were already under judgment, one of the men, the other Israelites said, look, you ain't about to get us in trouble with the most high no more. So he got up and he drove a javelin through that man's gut and hers too. And the scripture says that that actually turned away the wrath of Yah from the children of Israel, because what he did was a righteous Deed, And see, some of you Christians can't even deal with that. You can't even deal with that right now. I'm going to tell you right now, you need to get off of those drugs. And I'm talking about Christianity because it is one hell of a drug. And it's got so many people messed up. They don't even know if they're going or coming. They don't even know if they're going and coming. Now, someone else brought to my attention, and I haven't had a chance to do a whole lot of research on this yet, but uh, there was a picture that someone shared with me uh, with both of them, Jean, with a white woman, and they indicated that that was his girlfriend. Uh, I'm going to uh, do a little bit more research into that and see if that is the case, because that adds a whole other layer to the whole story if that is the case. And those of you who follow this channel and our ministry, you know what angle or what layer that adds to the whole storyline. But anyway, our people, like the Bible says, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. We think that we're doing something so holy and righteous and that the Most High is up in heaven smiling down on that young man, the brother. See, most of us got it twisted. You don't know the Father like you think you do. This is why it behooves you to study to show yourself approved. Study the scripture. Study the word. Seek and ye shall find. Get understanding. It says in all thy getting, get understanding. Don't just take someone else's word for it. Somebody's told you all of your life that you have to forgive and forget. And regardless to what someone does to you, you have to show this undying love for them. Don't you realize that don't even sound right? Even Gentiles, you know, white people are like, uh, no, I couldn't do that. And on that, they are perfectly correct. Get in the Bible and read some of these stories about how our ancestors dealt with enemies and how they dealt with situations. We are the only group of people on the planet who think that they're righteous for going around forgiving people who take the lives of your family members. You're not righteous. You're so showing how stupid you are. 
The Bible says my people are stupid. The Most High actually said this. He said my people are stupid. To do that which is good, they don't know how to do that. But to do that which is evil, they do that very well. But sit around with their self-righteous ways thinking that they're doing something or that they're pleasing the Most High when they do these idiotic deeds. That was a comfort to the flesh only. That's all that was. And for those of you who say, well, he's young. I want, to, I want to say something to you about that. A lot of people saying, oh, he's only 18. He's young. He doesn't know any better. It's a sad day when you're 18 years old and you don't know any better. King Tut was 12 years old. There were other little Israelite rulers. One in particular we saw was eight years old. Come on now. We saw young men. I remember, I believe it was Jeremiah, one of the prophets, um, that said, I, he told the Most High, I am only a child when he was age 10. And the Most High says, say not unto me that I am a child. Just do what I told you to do. And so to sit back and say he's only 18 and he don't know any better, that just plays into the, the, the psychosis of our people that we have some problems. If you're 18 and you don't know any better, that's a problem for me. That is a real problem. You should know better than that. Especially when there were boy kings r r walking around at age 12, ruling whole nations and kingdoms. Come on now. Our people, again, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. But that same love and compassion that we have for these other people. One thing that proves that you are not righteous is the fact that you can't have that same love and compassion for your own people. Now, no one is saying that you should just love and, and forgive and just um, be so googly over a black person who did the same thing to your loved one. No one is saying that you should do that. But what we are saying is that it seems very, very hypocritical for you not to be able to do something that you're willing for your own people that you're willing to do for another group of people. If you're going to be fair... You shouldn't be feeling anything for either. Now, if there's a case where somebody made a mistake, that's different. There have been cases where someone um, someone had a loved one killed in a car accident or whatever. And uh, the family member is able to forgive the person who made a mistake, right? But in this case, this woman came up in this brother's house and took his life. And came and, and everybody... We're trying to scurry about to cover this up and to soften her punishment and make her seem like a little innocent damsel in distress who was so afraid and tired and sleepy and confused. Oh, let's help poor Amber. Now, let's just make Amber disappear for a minute and, and call her uh, Laquita or Laquisha. And let's say she didn't have the blonde hair, but Laquisha has some locks. Or just say a four-inch afro. Would that bailiff have been running her fingers through her hair? Hell no. I'm sorry. We just don't even have that kind of compassion for our own people, which shows that a lot of so-called black people are sick. Show me a narrative to where the judge... And the bailiff is giving that same treatment to a black man or a black woman. Show me that. When I say the same treatment, I'm talking about the same. The tears, all of it. They're crying, they're hugging her, embracing her. All of it. But instead of Amber, it's Laquita with the four inch afro and the big lips. And the dark skin. Black judges, black bailiffs, black family. Mm, mm, mm. So, I'm sorry, but our people have a high horse that they ride up on too. Yes, they do. Our people have a high horse that they ride up on too. And I'm pretty sure at that moment to where... This young man was on the stage, the world stage on camera. And he made, decided to make that move and ask for a hug and all of this other kind of stuff. I bet he felt pretty darn good. 
And that made a lot of folks smile. But it made a lot of folks very upset. Because we were like, what the hell is this we're looking at? What are we looking at? Now, some think that this whole thing was a hoax. Now, I'm going to address that real quick, too. I can understand where and why people would think this. I can't say whether it was or not. But one thing that I can say, it makes you wonder sometimes if there's a lot of talks and meetings and chats going on where it is made or is a, some type of deal is made to say, um, let's soften the way this all looks. Let's do this. Um, we'll, we'll do this for you if you just soften the way it all looks. Uh, maybe throw a little crying, uh, tears and some sadness and a few hugs here and there. Now, it's not unheard of. This type of stuff has happened before. So I can understand why people are feeling that it was a possibility. I wouldn't be a bit surprised at all. And after the fact, the young man is already dead in the ground. Some time has gone by. I could see a family member saying, well, you know what? Me being angry is not going to bring him back. So uh, a few thousand dollars isn't going to hurt. Yeah, I'll do it. Why not? I can see people doing that because we have seen it done before. Let me refresh you all's remember refresh you all's memory. Remember the DC sniper. I spoke to his wife, his ex-wife, many, many, many years ago, and she said that some people offered to pay her a large amount of money to say something that wasn't true about Louis Farrakhan. And this woman had a great deal of integrity. And the, the amount of money that they offered her was a large amount of money. A large amount of money. And all they wanted her to do was try to implicate Louis Farrakhan somehow in what her husband had did. And she would not do it. She was a very, very honest woman that wouldn't do it. Um, we, we got a book from her. We were going to be doing a book trailer. And this is when we were still Christians at the time. But I remember thinking to myself that this was this was a very, very honest, righteous woman. As a matter of fact, the person, some someone that was in the studio who saw the whole exchange even noted that she had a great deal of integrity for not allowing even... A small amount of money to sway her but it was trust me it wasn't a small amount that was offered to her and so I said all that to say this that there are people out there who would have accepted the money they would have accepted the money and those offering the money would have made it so handsome and attractive to where they couldn't turn it down but not a lot of people in this world have integrity I'm not saying that that is what happened here in this case, but I'm just saying that there are so many possibilities out here that nothing would surprise me at all. Absolutely nothing would surprise me. Very sad day indeed, however, to see our people on a world stage just continuously making us look very, very foolish. When you have other people who come right out, people of other racial groups come right out and rebuke the reaction and say, no, no, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Now, they're not speaking or saying anything bad about the family who did this and the judge and all of them. They're not saying anything bad. They're just saying, look, point blank, I couldn't do it. And so it just shows you that other people look at us as if we are just very simple minded, straight up. It is what it is, family. A lot of people look at us like we're just plain, simple-minded. But when it comes to our own people, you can best believe that these other people notice. They notice that we are not like this towards each other. We are not like this towards one another. They notice that we bend and twist to their every command, but for each other, we can't stand each other. They know it. As a matter of fact, they as a matter of fact, they have helped set the stage for some of that. And they're just sitting back, going along for the ride, watching it all unfold day in and day out. 
how we all fight for their attention, but we can't stand one another and we'll do anything. A lot of our people will do anything and everything to try to destroy another black person, but wouldn't lift a finger against anybody else. Utter hypocrisy. Utter hypocrisy. And here we are, yet another case where we are made to look like a foolish bunch of people on a world stage with something this significant. I thought I was seeing things when I saw all of the outpouring of love and compassion for the person who took this man's life. I thought I was seeing things, but guess what? I am not shocked nor surprised. It is what it is, family. And with that, I will say, Shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment.